Hi, I'm Anne Wilson Wellship, and today I want to talk to you about this thing called volatility. It's something that people get so afraid of in their investing. And what is it and how can you manage it and deal with it? So volatility is about ups and downs. It's about big waves. So volatility is the thing that often people will talk about, about risk. It's about when prices go up and prices go down. Now, most people, when they think about volatility, they think about the stock market or equity investing because equity investing is one of the most liquid ways you can invest. So because of the internet and because of access now to literally minute by minute, microsecond, microsecond information around the world. In any moment, you can see what is the price change of stocks or markets as a whole as people buy and sell these things. So volatility is the rate of change of the price in an asset. You also have volatility in the property market. You have volatility in businesses. But the challenge is those asset classes, it's, it's less easy to get a moment by moment valuation so people don't tend to think of volatility or the ups and downs of prices when they think about those asset classes. So now volatility, this is the rate of change of that price. The price goes up, the price goes down, the price goes up, the price goes down. And the, the rate of it or the, how fast it changes or the expense of that rate of change is known as your volatility index. Now in, in the world, it's actually the Chicago board of options of something along those lines, the good old Chicago board, simply put, they have a thing called the VIX and they measure this rate of change or how volatile the market is. Now, when you're going in a bear market, so a bear market is when the market is going down, it might go steadily down and then your volatility won't be big because it's a one way direction. In a bull market, this is when the prices are going up on the stock exchange, you, again, your volatility index volatility index might be small because it's more of a one-way direction. So volatility is more about the up and the down. And so when we're often in a transition between a bull and a bear market, or sometimes we can have long periods of more sideways movement, you often have more change in volatility. You also have bigger volatility comes about when there can be periods of uncertainty. Maybe there's political uncertainty. Maybe there's socioeconomic uncertainty. And boy, we certainly have a lot of that. And so we are seeing that generally the volatility index is starting to get bigger and this is making people really jitterish so what happens when volatility increases pe people who don't understand it end up sitting on the sideline and they go and you know prices are really high or maybe the price dropped I'm just going to sit on the sideline I I'm afraid of investing and that's the worst thing we can do sitting and not being in a market is super dangerous because when we don't have assets working for us but it can be a bit frightening when we look at the prices going up and down so how do we deal with volatility and instead how do we actually get it working for us so the very first thing you need to do is don't panic understand that volatility is absolutely normal price of markets around the world go up and down for two primary reasons they go up and down because of the fundamental changes in an underlying stock, maybe a certain sector has shifted, something's happened to the market. So that can make the price of something drop, it becomes less valuable or it becomes more valuable. But actually, the biggest impact on volatility is emotions. Yes, us humans love to think we are logical things, but in fact, we are driven by our emotions. And things can happen out there, the news gets all hyped up, and the market reacts. It's very reactive. So you've got to know volatility is completely normal. And in any trend, be it a bull trend, be it a bear trend, there's still volatility. There's micro movements, mo second by second, minute by minute, day by day, week by week. But the longer period of time, it all dampens out. There's these waves. And so when you start getting perspective and going, we are here about long-term sustainable wealth. We are here about getting quality assets working for us. And we really don't give a damn about the minute by minute change, even the hour by hour, the day by day, the week by week change. What we're interested in is the longer term trajectory. So you don't panic and you get on with your life and realize volatility is completely normal. That's your first thing you do. So the second thing you do is go and if there's been a big shift and you really starting to get caught hooked by the media go and assess the situation and go okay 
Why am I investing? What am I even doing in point? Ah, okay, I'm creating my financial well-being. I understand I need assets working for me. The stock market, the investment property business, they are all key assets that I need working for me. Okay, so nothing has changed there. What is my strategy that I'm doing? Am I investing in low-cost index trackers? Am I managing the things that I can manage? Yes, I am. Great, can I manage the, the emotions of the market? No, I can't. So come back to what is in your control. And just go, has anything significantly, significantly changed? And the truth is, for most of the strategies, certain strategies I teach you about consistent, regular investing in these different asset classes, your strategy is not going to change by short-term adjustments in the market. So reassess the situation, come back to your intention, what are you doing, and realizing you just stick with what you're doing. The third key way that we deal with volatility is we buy quality. When we are buying quality, we don't really care about what's happening with the micro movements. And the easiest way to buy quality is we buy via index trackers. We buy the index. Because the very nature of when we invest in an index, it means that we are just mirroring what's happening on the market. So let's say you, your core home market index tracker that you've got in your portfolio is investing in, in the FTSE 100. So that's the top 100 companies listed on the London Stock Exchange. And you've got a single index tracker that tracks that and buys you shares by virtue of that index tracker. Now, if a market shifts fundamentally and we've gone from horse carts to cars and now there's no longer a business for horse carts so yes you do have structural changes in markets all of your horse cart companies are going to drop out of that index and now your car companies are going to come into that index so you don't have to go after chasing that because the natural market changes will mean that the companies that are no longer performing that no longer have good markets are going to drop away and the other companies that are growing that have sustainable businesses are going to come into that index so the very fact that you buy indices in a design portfolio means you're always buying the top companies and there's natural falling out of that index and you don't have to worry about that the fourth element, the thing that you do about managing volatility is you spread the risk you spread the volatility Again, this word risk is so overused and so misunderstood. So generally, risk just means volatility, the big rate of change. So that at any moment, the value of your investment can go up and down. So what you do is you spread the volatility by two core investing principles. The first is by diversification. So diversification means you literally don't have all your eggs in one basket. So let's say you've got a basket of duck eggs. You want more than one duck egg. So let's say duck eggs are your equities. These are shares in businesses. So inside that, you want to make sure that you've got shares in a whole lot of businesses. The worst thing you want to do is just have one or two or three or even 10 shares in only 10 companies because now you are quite risky what you want to do is have a basket of a whole lot of shares and that's why index tracking investing is so cool because by virtue of a single index tracker let's say in the S&P 500 means with a single investment you've got diversification around the top 500 companies listed in the US and so that would be your equity basket so you have diversification within your one asset class again you can have an a basket of investment property so let's call that your chicken eggs again you never just want one property you never want to have just one type of property in one location so if you're going to invest directly in property you want to have a whole lot of smaller units instead of just having one big unit you can also get diversification across your property asset class by investing in real estate investment trusts or better yet an index tracker that tracks a whole bundle of real estate investment trusts so that you get investment property in retail in commercial in industrial and also in different regions so you see now you have diversification within each asset class you can have diversification in commodities so that is diversification so it spreads that volatility so if something happens in one sector or one market or one geographic region 
it doesn't matter because you've got exposure in others. So it dampens down that big up and down. But the second aspect that spreads out volatility is by having asset allocation. So I've already shown you not only do you want to have all of your eggs in one basket, you want to have a multiple of eggs, but you want to have different kinds of eggs. And that's why you need to have asset allocation as well. You want to be investing in equities, investment property, low input dis businesses, things like loan instruments, commodities. So you have, because Every asset class goes through different cycles. And so when you've got these different investments together, these different volatility cycles up and down dampen together and you get this nice solid stability and constant growth in your asset portfolio. So number five, the fifth way to deal with volatility is by regular investing. And this I am so passionate about and so many people really get this wrong. You need to be making a habit of regular investing into assets and the easiest asset class to do it in is your stock market investments in these things called index trackers. And so when you set aside a fixed amount of money and every month that goes in and you buy your units in your chosen index trackers, it means that when the price goes up, you get fewer units for your money. And when the price goes down, you celebrate because now it's on a sale. And for that same amount of money, you get more units in that specific index tracker fund, whether it's in a unit trust type or whether it's in an ETF. It doesn't matter, you get more for your money. And so over time, the average number of units that you buy for that fixed investment balances out and you actually get a lower cost, average cost per unit. So regular investing is the way that you balance out volatility. Regular monthly contributions, so you design your portfolio, you put it on autopilot, Get out there and have fun because that's what you're meant to be doing, not staring at your assets and see how they're performing. You come and do a big annual review and that's it. Get on with your life. So I'm Anne Wilson. If you've been watching this anywhere over than other at thewealthchef.com, head on over there. Leave me a comment below this video. What have you learned about volatility? And which of these five things can you apply in your life right now to deal with the anxiety around volatility, get over it and allow you to have fun and get on living with your life because that's the whole point. Assets, money is meant to serve you, to live your greatest life, not enslave you and certainly not stress you out.